While extremely powerful and flexible, React is, after all, just a library for building user interfaces. In real-life scenarios, single-page applications come with a lot of other requirements and scenarios you need to solve for. Just like with any other popular library out there, an entire ecosystem of frameworks and additional libraries were built by the community around React to cover a wide range of common situations and well-known problems. In this video, we'll take a look at my top 3 picks for the must-have libraries and tools you should use in a React project. As an FYI, this video is part of a free React Crash course, so check out the description for more videos in this series. We'll start by taking a look at one of the most important aspects of single-page applications, the routing. The importance of routing was first outlined in the Ember.js framework when the Ember dev team really enforced the concept that the URL should reflect what the app state is and what is rendered in the DOM. Of course, this really helps to navigate through the browser history, use bookmarks or share links around. A reliable and complete routing system became the norm in the meantime and you should develop all your apps with that in mind. Choosing the best option here is a no-brainer. React Router is extremely powerful and has great community support. Adding React Router to your project is straightforward. Usually, you will wrap your app around the browser router component and define a list of routes where each URL path is linked to a React component. The library also offers seamless nested route support and it should be obvious to you that with this approach you are already forced to plan and model your application with some structure in mind. Remember that whenever defining navigation links, you should use the library's nav link component which uses the history API in the background to allow you to seamlessly navigate through the app without any browser refreshes. The nav link component enables other useful features as well, such as the possibility to style the links pointing to the current route. You can control the location where a nested route component will be rendered in the parent via the outlet component. You can retrieve the route parameters at any time via the use params hook and there are a lot of other powerful features you can use, but we'll discuss them in more detail in one of the next videos. To sum up, always use React Router in your projects. Besides the expected functionality, it will force you to think about your app in a more coherent way and it'll guide you towards an architecture which is easier to maintain in the long run. Once I have routing in place, the next aspect of the app I'm usually focused on is the state management. State in single page applications is quite complex and a lot of libraries and approaches were introduced over the years in an attempt to gracefully solve this problem. React comes out of the box with the Context API, a solution we discussed in a previous video. While powerful, this is not flexible enough to solve some of the more complex situations you'll find in larger applications. I worked with a lot of state management libraries in the past, but Recoil is by far the most straightforward and easy to use solution. Just like React, Recoil was created and is maintained by a development team from Facebook. The setup requires, by far, the least boilerplate code compared to other state management libraries. The first thing you have to do is to wrap your app in a Recoil root component. It is a good practice to place this at the top of your component hierarchy. Next, create an atoms.ts file where we'll define the state data which we'll be able to use throughout our app. Each atom is a slice of independent data which can be easily linked into any component via a hook. When defining atoms, make sure that the key attribute is a unique string and define a default value for your state slice. With the recoil root component and the atom defined, we can now easily set or get the state value. In our example, we are updating the atom with a list of tasks we fetched from the server. Finally, the state data can be retrieved in any component by simply using the use recoil state hook. Putting it all together, you are ending up with a very concise approach and a clean code base while also getting the benefits of a centralized state management system. The final library we are going to discuss is a component library. While not the most popular one, I find end design to be extremely flexible and reliable. It has great documentation and community support and it is my main choice since its clean approach allows you to easily add custom styling to give your app a more unique look and feel. The component library space is yet another crowded one with a lot of popular choices like material design or bootstrap. In my experience, these ones are a bit more opinionated. While they are a great addition to your project, I value the flexibility and the lightly styled and designed components more. It offers a wide variety of components to work with and it's pretty much a plug and play setup to use them. These are the main three libraries I'm using in any project at the moment. We'll dive deeper into them in the following videos, so subscribe to the channel to be notified when the videos are released. Thank you for watching.